A local high school finds success getting students to dream of careers in math and science. And a bilingual musical takes Gala Hispanic Theater by storm and audiences can't get enough. All of that plus the top stories from the News Rundown on this edition of We Are Washington. Welcome to We Are Washington. Coming up, it's a fun-filled field day at the D.C. Armory, where cutting-edge technology is fueling the imaginations of local high school students and encouraging them to pursue careers in math and science. And we'll go backstage at the production of In the Heights at Gala Hispanic Theater. The musical by Hamilton creator Lin-Manuel Miranda was performed in Spanish for the first time in the U.S., for audiences right here in the district, and they couldn't get enough. All that and more, but first, here's our news rundown. Naloxone kits that reverse the effects of opioid overdoses are saving lives in the district. Mayor Emilio Bowser says 2,500 additional kits will be distributed as part of the effort to address opioid addiction and overdoses in the district. I want uh, all of those who are suffering uh, to know that they are not alone, that there are services in the District of Columbia to, to help. Uh, and we will continue to support um, broad and coordinated efforts to do exactly that. By putting this type of medication in the hands of lay persons that can administer it quicker, we get there and based on the type of synthetics that are used in the drug itself, this may be enough to keep their respiratory drive going until we can get there and provide further treatment. So this here, I believe, is going to be a proven effective method to continue to save lives in the district. Residents in Ward 7 got the chance to speak directly to city officials as Mayor Muriel Bowser led a community walk through the Marshall Heights neighborhood in Southeast. During the community public safety walk, Mayor Bowser spoke with residents and business owners about a variety of neighborhood concerns. The walk began at 5004 D Street Southeast, which is the future site of short-term family housing units. More than 4,000 DCPS students stayed in school a little longer this year. Mayor Bowser celebrated the extended year at Garfield Elementary School. Students enrolled in the 11 extended year schools in the district receive an additional month of instruction by increasing the academic year from 180 days to 200 days. Year-round education is an extremely uh, important component to helping us reach our vision. We want each student to be loved, to be challenged, and, and to be prepared to be successful in school and thrive in life. Seven D.C. high school students took their first step towards careers in early childhood education. The students are graduates of an innovative two-year program launched last year called First Step Child Development Associate Program. It gives students the opportunity to earn CDA credentials while completing their high school graduation requirements. The students were also paid through a partnership with the Mayor Marion Barry Summer Youth Employment Program. Mayor Bowser plans to expand the program over the next three years to support 150 high school students. Students at Democracy Prep in Ward 8 can't wait for their renovated middle school. Mayor Bowser joined school officials and Ward 8 community members for the groundbreaking for Democracy Prep Congress Heights Public Charter School. The renovated building on MLK Junior Avenue in Southeast will provide 15 new classrooms and enough space to accommodate 400 more students. Simply put, the message to Congress was leave us alone. Congresswoman Eleanor Holmes Norton and Mayor Muriel Bowser joined forces on Capitol Hill to defend D.C. home rule. Both leaders joined a coalition of national organizations at the press conference to push back on congressional attempts to block and overturn D.C. laws during the 2018 budget process with the use of riders. The riders that the Congresswoman uh, mentioned don't do anything to make D.C. better. Uh, they don't do anything to support the 670,000 people who live here, to strengthen our neighborhoods, our small businesses, or to strengthen our schools. The riders target a variety of hot button issues from gun safety and marijuana to budget autonomy and death with dignity laws. 
Keeping young people busy in the district just got a little easier. 40 nonprofit organizations from around the city will receive $2 million as part of the out of school time grant competition. Mayor Bowser and Deputy Mayor Jennifer Niles announced the winners, which combined serve more than 21,000 students before and after school and on the weekends. The first ever nonstop flight from Delhi to Dulles International Airport was greeted by water cannons and an Indian prayer ceremony. Air India will now operate nonstop service between Dulles and Indira Gandhi International Airport three times a week. The flights are expected to bring an additional 30,000 visitors to the region with an estimated yearly economic impact of $30 million. Some of the district's most lovely and stylish ladies were strutting their stuff at the 17th anniversary of the American Classic Woman of the Year pageant at Lincoln Theater. The theme of this year's Washington, D.C. pageant was forever young, never grow old. And that was certainly true for all the women competing in this year's competition, which included a talent portion, interview, and evening gowns. The winner is Robin Riddick. Congratulations to all the pageant contestants and to the newly crowned Queen of D.C., Ms. Robin Riddick. Time for just a quick few items today to wrap up the news recap. Mm -hmm. So extended school year for DCPS students, more students spending time in schools year round. What do you think about that? Great idea. Right? I'm, I'm sorry <laughs> that my kids kind of missed out on yeah. that. They're a little bit older. But you know, a lot of people mm -hmm. worry that U.S. students are falling behind globally and, and people think that this could be a big part of the reason. In places like China and India, students go to sure. school about 30 days longer. So, the, so this might be part of the way to kind of close the gap. And I, I think it's, it's certainly great for parents. <laughs> right, and then you, you read about all the time there's different places, different municipalities that are talking about how they might have to shorten school year or school oh, weeks. Yeah. And to just think about how in D.C. you're going in the opposite direction. We're actually sending students to school for longer. It's Definitely. a tremendous thing. I think that's the way to yeah. go. And first step is another thing I want to talk about. That program goes hand in hand with talking about extended school year. Yeah, if you think definitely. about it because you're starting... Uh, students who are interested in, in uh, going into the field of education and, and pursuing that, you're starting them off earlier, and I think that's great that they're partnering up with Marion Berry Summer Youth Employment Program. Uh, tremendous opportunity for them to get a head start on their careers, uh, you know, a career that really does take a lot of training and, and a lot right. of you know, creativity and lesson planning. So. I Definitely. think that's good, yeah. I also wanted to mention about the Air India mm -hmm. flights. I mean, imagine <laughs> for this region, you can imagine for people who have family in India, yeah. this must be such a great thing. Um, even with a direct flight yeah. from Dulles to Delhi, you're yep. still talking 15 hours. So <laughs> imagine yeah. if, you know, if you don't have a direct flight, yeah, I, I mean, that's that's quite a trip. Um, the Air India, I, yeah. I guess they'll offer flights, I think, Sunday, Wednesdays and Fridays. Mm -hmm. Tremendous that they're able to open it up, you know, open up D.C. and, and the region to more tourism and oh, more definitely. people coming to see what we have to offer here in the district. I also think that that welcome with the water cannons. I mean, what a what a it's picture great. that was, too. It's right? really <laughs> nice to celebrate. It's a great thing. Yeah. Coming up, a smash Broadway hit makes it Spanish language day view in Columbia Heights. And after the break, robots, hoverboards, and more. A field day that brings science and math to life. Most people know that here in the U.S. we need more young people to pursue careers in science and math. In fact, there's a shortage of American workers ready for jobs in science, technology, engineering and math or STEM fields. But here in the district, one public charter high school is finding success in motivating students to consider the exciting opportunities and endless possibilities of STEM careers. Take a look. Vivian, in general, tell me about the program you have going on here at the DC Armory. So today we are having our annual STEM Field Day. This is our seventh year, and we have evolved into this event where we now had over 20 exhibitors, um, ranging from Department of Agriculture, Department of Interior. We had National Security Agency. We had Metropolitan Police, Department of Forensic Science, a host of 
um, STEM organizations and universities here to support our students in developing STEM skills and concepts because we believe while we participate in the STEM curriculum inside the classroom, having an event such as our annual STEM field day provide opportunities for students to get out of the classroom and to interact with these experts with their STEM expertise and to provide foundational skills. The students have a wonderful time. So you guys actually created this robot? Yes. So, so let's see how this goes, okay? Let's try it out. You're gonna take it for a spin for us so we can see how it works. I see a big future for this though. I can imagine if this were like a coffee table and you're watching TV, you could kind of like bring the chips closer or something like yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Students who are in quest of a STEM career can actually utilize this day and gain some type of hope or some type of vision of what their future could be in STEM careers. My favorite thing was the Department of Forensic Science and they did fingerprint and it was my favorite thing because I want to minor in forensic science and major in criminal justice and I'm interested in becoming a detective. So I'm definitely considering um, engineering as my future career path but um, right now I really do want to be a cybersecurity expert. Excellent, we need that. The thing I like most was the robot because my new friend at my mom's school he made it and it's really inspiring because like, I really like robotics and science and I really like to build something like that one day. So this is a hovercraft and basically we know how it works, it floats on air. The way that we have constructed it is to hold a leaf blower and the leaf blower acts as the fan that gives it the, the air cushion that reduces the friction that allows it to glide along a smooth surface. All right, let's take a look at this hovercraft. I'm excited. I love technology. I love hands-on things. And I love seeing like something come to life like this. At first, it was just an idea. It was dead. And now I'm on it, testing it, and it's amazing. One of the important things for these young people mm -hmm. to remember is a lot of the top jobs in STEM fields in the future have not even been created yet. You're right about that. It's actually a scary thought, isn't it? Very scary, <laughs> and I, I think it's probably going to be all about the robots. Yeah, probably. <laughs> it looked like it was from the piece that we just saw, definitely. Uh, one of those fields is ex expanding that we were talking about, too, neuroscience, mm -hmm, actually. Definitely. And we had a chance to hear from Dr. Jay Lombard, who's applying cutting-edge neuroscience to answer timeless questions about faith, reality, and reason. What inspired me to be a neurologist was when I was 19, experiencing my father's uh, eventual death from a massive stroke and a sense of complete helplessness watching the effects of a stroke on a person I loved most in the world and being told there was nothing to do about it. And I just believe that through my career I would learn enough about the brain to be able to help people that experienced situations that were similar to my own. I'm working with brain injury patients to help show them that there are promising uh, approaches in translational neuroscience to promote recovery of brains after injuries. I think the deeper that we get into the biology of the brain, uh, the more we realize there are tremendous gaps in our understanding, not necessarily about the brain, but about the mind. Uh, what I mean by mind is sort of our feeling states, uh, our beliefs, our dreams, our, our hopes, even things that either give us faith or we, what we lose faith in. And I released a book called Mind of God, which is a book about neuroscience, faith, and spirituality. And it's, it's a book that really is, is very much, you know, from you know, my own personal feeling state as opposed to just the science. There is no objective reality out there. It's all a subjective reality that we, we create with our own minds. And when we understand that, that's a very empowering uh, realization because we now can change our lives by realizing how powerful our minds are. Well, the mind is definitely a powerful thing, right? You know, he, he raises some really interesting questions about those things you can't quantify, those things mm -hmm. you can't measure, things that are intangible. Yeah, that field will just be uh, experiencing a lot of growth for a very long time. Absolutely, <laughs> right. Well, coming up, we'll go backstage with some of the actors from the first ever Spanish production of Lin-Manuel Miranda's hit show, In the Heights. Don't go away.
In the Heights is the first musical created by Lin-Manuel Miranda, better known for the stunning success of his recent Broadway hit, Hamilton. In the Heights tells the stories of Latino immigrants in New York City and thrilled audiences with music and dance that combine salsa and rap for something entirely new, helping to earn the show four Tony Awards. Here in the district, the show made its Spanish language debut at the Gala Hispanic Theater. which is um, the good girl raised, you know, by traditional family immigrants from Puerto Rico. The show starts the day she gets back from her first year at Stanford University. So she comes back with all this baggage of things that she has kept a secret. She actually dropped out of school, so she hasn't told her parents, and she comes back with this news and you know, the show then uh, unfolds everything that happens when she tells her parents. It doesn't matter where people are from, they come see the show and they, they cry, they laugh, they relate. And, like, Jewish people, Americans, like, you don't even have to be an immigrant to relate to, to parts of this story. And I think that's what's brilliant about um, the show and about Limanuel Miranda is just that he's so good at uh, making you feel um, you know, stuff because it's very relatable things that everybody, you know, goes through. I hope they get inspired to keep fighting for their dreams. I mean, that's why we're all here. And that's the message. That we, we have a voice that we want it to be heard. So we want people to also raise their voices, speak up. What do you want? What have you always wanted? Uh, where do you see yourself? So all of these people here in the show, they have a place they're going to. And you see it from the beginning until the end. I started off in a small theater in the DR, and I never thought I would be here at Gala playing Carline in the Heights, never. So that's that happened because I kept moving forward. This is a show about a community in the Heights, and the majority it's like immigrants, mostly Latinos, and like you know, but like. Um, and, it, and it just represents who, who I am. Like, I don't even have to think about it. It's just that the representation of, like, um, political issues. Um, uh, but, but we're also, like, simple people, you know? And it's just that's the gift to tell that story. We knew this show was going to be a representation of like immigrants and being in Washington and like the political situation that we live in the states. We knew that this was going to be an impact in a way, like there, but we didn't know how much of an impact it was going to be.
Benny is, I guess, the outsider sort of of the community. Washington Heights is a primarily Latino community and my character is African American. So he sticks out amongst his friends and the families in the neighborhood. And he's trying really hard to fight for his right to be amongst everyone else in the community. Most people respect him, but you know, there's still that little bit of distance of me not coming from where everybody else is from or not speaking the language everybody else speaks. So he's constantly trying to gain respect um, in his heart and his head from other people uh, around him. Yeah, Lynn, he just knows how to capture what's at the heart of traditional American musical theater, but then he wraps it up in all of this culture and all of this ancestry that makes it something new and something fresh, but something that's still familiar to people, so that you have that ability to be introduced to something new at first, but then submit to it and fall in love with it and fall in love with the people on stage. So I haven't seen Hamilton, but now it looks like I have something else I need to add to the list after seeing that little behind the scenes on In the Heights. I have to add that to the list of uh, shows to see too. Definitely, I would highly recommend uh, it. And I think one of the signs of a great show is that even though it was in Spanish, um, audience members who didn't speak any Spanish mm. enjoyed it just as much because really? you know the music is so good and I, I would consider the show more bilingual because there okay. are there is enough English that you can follow along but it really didn't prevent anybody oh. from fully enjoying the show that's one of those things that I was thinking about too is that would it be something that would prevent you from understanding what was going on but not at all kind of shows how clever it was written that you can follow along even though there are some parts in another language definitely well that is all the time that we have for today but we we do have time for one last thing. I wanted to mention that obviously Lynn Manuel Miranda mm -hmm. is a genius. <laughs> um, Very and clever, yeah. Further proof of that is mm -hmm. that he actually created and wrote In the Heights when he was just a sophomore in college. Really? At Wesleyan College. He, he performed it, uh, he did a production of it okay. there. Some people saw it and it ended up on Broadway. So wow. clearly a uh, very talented uh, person and, yeah. and the signs were there very early. In yeah. a way, it's, it's almost depressing, but. <laughs> yeah, right? That he was able to come up with something at that age. That's exactly, so, when I think about myself uh, in college, you know, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you, exactly. And it's also interesting too that he was writing in that style. Yeah. Uh, the same thing, the similar thing you would see with Hamilton uh, even back then. Right. Wow, that's amazing. Well, good story, good one last thing. Very fun. That that is all the time that we have for today. We'd like to thank you for spending time with us and remind you that if you want to see any more of our programs, We Are Washington, check us out on our YouTube page and search Entertain DC. See you next time. <laughs>